Hi. Hi. It's Allie and Clementine, and Clementine. with Seattle Coffee Gear. And today we're going to talk about brew methods. Coffee. Yeah, coffee and brew methods. And brew methods. And brew methods. Um, so we have two different brew methods into the spectrum here. French press is going to be on the heavier bodied side. It's got a metal filter, so it's going to have a little bit more oil to it. Whereas pour over here is what Clementine's going to go over. Um, and she's got her paper filter. Um, so it's going to be kind of, we're going to brew the coffee and taste them side by side to tell you how, um, how they're different. We're kind of going to try to do this the most scientific way we can. So we're both going to be using 20, 22. 22 grams of coffee, um, 200 degree water, mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to do the same 352 yes. ounces of grams. Grams. Um, grams. Grams. Grams of water grams. Um, for a 1 to 15 ratio. And so the only things that will be different are the grind size required for the brew methods. So you see here we have the finer grind for the paper filter and the coarser grind for the uh, French press. Um, and yep, yeah, same coffee. We're using the Kaleidoscope from Counter Culture. Kind of comes in a fun box. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. Looks like a Kaleidoscope. It does. Tastes like one too. It's kind of funny. Um, good, good, good choice for this coffee because you know, when you look in a kaleidoscope, you see like it's the same thing, but different. Yeah, it kind changes of. and it's sparkly uh -huh. and fun and exciting. So the brew methods. Beautiful. That could be cheesy, but I'm okay with it. Um, anyway. <laughs> it's, it's dynamic. 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 Cool. So um, we didn't want to do the same thing twice, so I already pre-ground my French press coffee beforehand. So I'm just going to fill that up with, um, remind me how many grams of water? 252. 200? 200, 352 Thank Allie, you. Okay. grams of water. <laughs> Perfect. And then, so we'll change it over to your your grind style for your pour over, which is going to be, did I say 16? Mm -hmm. 16. So, right there. Perfect. Um, and then why don't you measure out some coffee? I'm going to measure out some coffee. And I'm going to measure out 16 grams of coffee. 22 grams. So I'm going to measure out 22 grams. Why did I say 16? Because we were going back and forth on how much. We were talking a lot. We also talked about doing 20, 30, 30 was my initial. So these are recipes. And pretty much the way that you figure out what you're going to do. Don't forget to turn it on. Is Wait. <laughs> Not the, yet. The, there you go. All right. So you're always going to do a 1 to 16 ratio of, of, um, Coffee to coffee water. water. Mm-hmm. And you can change that up depending on how strong you like it. Like, for some reason, during the wintertime, I feel like I like a little bit stronger coffee, so I do, like, smaller ratios, so, like, less water to coffee. But typically, the most, like, traditional style is 1 to 15, 1 to 16. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so... So just depending on whatever you choose for your recipe within those, within those um, parameters, you're going to multiply... So we're doing 22 grams of coffee. We're going to multiply 22 by 16, and that's how we got our 352 uh, output. So you should have seen how long it took us to do the math. We were talking for a long time. We both have degrees. We do. Somehow they let us pass math. <laughs> um, so I do you want to switch spots with me? We'll grind your coffee, yes. and then I'll start my pour over. Pour, pour over. My French press weight. Yes. So. You can see you already have the coffee in there. Get that out. Get out. I touched the coffee. I hope you're okay. Oh my that. god. Okay. I'm not actually a germaphobe. So. Oh, and I'm gonna start the timer. So this one brews for four minutes. So I'm trying to cover all the ground. So I have this timer going for that. 
some quick. Thank you for buying that. Let's add you a little bit more water. Okay. Have you ever done a brew comparison before? Um, just casually. Yeah. But yeah. After you. Thank you. Um, when I worked in the coffee shop I worked in before working for Seattle Coffee Gear, we did this all the time. Oh, cool. It was kind of like a requirement to try out all like of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like when a new coffee came in, so you would know how to recommend them to customers, you would try out the same coffee in every method. Mm -hmm. um, so, you would know, like, this style brings out this flavors and stuff like that. That's really cool. Though. Yeah, and I would always recommend people to try. Um, have you ever had a siphon? Mother. Oops. Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> Forgot to wet the filter. Yes, I did. <laughs> Hey, hmm. saved it. I did. I saved it. Just since I was close. Boom. It's kind of heating up. You should be fine. Okay. You're just sweating it. Yeah. Get those gross paper flavors out of here. Disgusting. Oops. Nice. Seriously though, if it tastes like paper, it's just like takes right away, right on away from it. it takes. It's disgusting. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, I do. I've had plenty of papery coffee. Me too. Wet your filters. But have you ever had a siphon? Yes. Um, cause so I would typically recommend, because siphon is one of the lightest ways to brew coffee because you can do um, tea with it. It was actually designed to do tea first. Um, and so maybe another time we can do a siphon on yeah, on here. We should maybe compare like a Chemex with a, a siphon. Because mm -hmm. be cool. the Chemex is still filtered, right? Mm -hmm. Just like this. And then you can do their siphons that are filtered and not, but mm -hmm. um, it's cool to see the spectrum. So, yeah. Awesome. Can empty yes. that out? Absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. Let's kick this off. So now we're doing our um, V60 brew right now here, pour over. Um, so we just kind of dump our coffee in and then I'm gonna try and flatten it out a little bit, make the coffee bed flat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there. Perfect. And the water's ready for you. That's perfect. All right, so 352 grams a reminder to start your timer. I'll help you out here. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yes. So I'm going to start with 100 in. I'm going to do three pours. I'm going to do 100. And this one, we're also kind of letting it bloom. So Have you had this coffee before? Yeah, it's really, really good, actually. I did 101. Keep this close by so I don't forget when to push it down. It's blooming right now, so so that's good. Do you do a 30 second bloom? Uh, yes. Well, it, it sort of depends. What mood you're in? Uh, yeah, I like to sort of watch the coffee and see. I don't want, uh, you don't want the flow to like stop in the middle. So I try and keep that consistent, but I want to let the uh, gases fully escape enough. Yeah. Yeah, so I want it to kind of, I want the bubbling to slow down a little bit before I do the next pour. Okay, and then I put in another 100 grams and we're gonna do a third pour after this and I'm gonna do 152. So is that kind of like a pulse pour recipe that you do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Pulse pouring is kind of hard. Like, I, I still struggle with it. Like, I, one of my barista friends was like trying to show me how to do it and I did like pour over after pour over after pour over after pour over <laughs> and I uh, came out with wildly different results. results. Yeah, so. Hmm. Yeah, once you figure out, yeah, that's kind of the importance of like keeping track of what you're doing and, and uh, every single step kind of pacing yourself because that way when you figure out what you do like, you can actually recreate it. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true, and like changing one variable at a time is mm -hmm. always good too. Yeah. 350. Oh. No, that's okay. 355. I kind of went a few a Close. few little grams over yeah. too, so. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so a couple of things you'll notice about the two methods. So first off, 
This one's gonna be a lot of a cleaner cup and whenever we pour it into our cups, we'll show you kind of, you can see uh, through it, which this one will have a lot more oil. So it'll be a little bit more like muddy, murky, uh, things like that. Did you have a pour over first or a French press first in your? French press. French press was your yeah. first? Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. I remember I was in college and I went to a friend's house um, and he, like, he was like, oh, can I make you some coffee? And I was like, yeah, like, love coffee, mm -hmm. thinking, you know, the regular old drip. I'd never had a French press before. Mm -hmm. And so he made me a French press and I can't remember what coffee it was, but I think he worked at Starbucks. So it was probably some Starbucks coffee. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is the best coffee I've ever had. I know. I feel yeah. like that every time I get like a, something different and new. Yeah, because it it's drastically changes the flavors for real. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be really interesting because it's there's so many consistent variables across what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we're really just going to be seeing how the brew method changes the flavor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yours is almost done, so I'm going to get the trash can okay. for whenever you are ready. All right, we've still got some water in there, so... I think we should pull it at right around three and a half minutes. Okay, so just it doesn't that's... extract. Yeah, so it doesn't over extract too much. Okay. That sounds good. Perfect. Ah. Beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Awesome. So, if we hold this up through the light, you can kind of see it's a lighter color. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, you can't see through this one yet. But, whenever we pour it, you can kind of see the lightness. One for you, ma'am. Mm, it looks it like has, maple syrup. It does. Kind of lighter. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we'll taste this together first since it's going to be lighter. Um, whenever you're trying coffees and you're doing them side by side, you always want to stick with whatever's lighter, whether it be the lighter bodied of the um, brew method or of the roast itself. Because um, after you switch over to the one that's heavier, it's going to coat your palate and so it won't taste the same. But it's interesting to try. Tea like, mm -hmm. tea like, and like chocolatey, like a milk chocolate. Yeah, and then like a little bit savory. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It has like a savory, almost like a herbal note in there. Yeah. What are the What are they? How do they describe it? Refreshing, floral, and bright. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could definitely see that. Yeah, definitely bright. Mhm. Mm It'll be really interesting to see how the French press changes that. Handles it. Mhm. Mm Hmm. Kind of citrusy. Definitely like it, it kind of pops at the back of your tongue, but then it mm -hmm. like sits around the edges too. Definitely, definitely. But it leaves um, really quick, so I would say it's it's it is a pretty light body. Let's see how this comes out in comparison. So mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit murkier. Murkier, yeah, but still kind of that light color. Yeah, it still does kind of have that light color. Did we cheers? We forgot to cheers. No, we cheers. didn't. Oh my god, you have a hand. I got it. It's fine. Thanks. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's hot. That one's hotter. It actually, it's not that much um, heavier than I thought it was going to be. It's still pretty bright. It is, yeah. It's like more round though, like round in flavor. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like it's, it's yeah. definitely got like a... Creamier, denser. Yeah, yeah, definitely, like definitely denser. And that might be this French press in particular. You remember it's got that double mm -hmm. metal filter. Mm -hmm. So it probably helps with some of that, like making it a little bit cleaner. Yeah. Which one do you like better? I think I like the French press. Really? For this one, yeah. Because it's like a, it just adds another layer of complexity to it, which I think is really interesting. I would agree. Yeah. I think they're both pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, because there's such, like, crisp flavors, I can definitely understand preferring the pour-over. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the 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 creaminess kind of makes it a little bit, it, it makes it a little bit different. It's sort of, you wouldn't expect that layer of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's, it's you know, interesting, too, that, like, your p opinion would probably change depending upon Which one the you coffee. Drink? Oh, you yeah. choose. Right. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, so like yeah. you may like uh -huh. this coffee is French press. Right. But something else you might like better is yeah. pour over. It doesn't mean that one of these methods is better than the other. It's just in combination with the, the flavors, mm -hmm. what it does to it. 
Yeah, yeah. and you know, um, the pour over is usually my go-to method, but I would agree in this mm -hmm. instance, I kind of like the added yeah. like roundness of that French press. Mm -hmm. It would be hard for you guys to see this at home, but like you see the do you see the sediment mm -hmm. yeah. in that? So that's coming through from that filter. It's so hard to see that. Yeah. But you'd like, probably notice if you did it at home too. It's yeah, it's really cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 one of the big differences too, is just all of that sediment and um, thickness is just kind of left in the filter and we tossed that out when we were done brewing. And that's why this one comes out a little bit more clean. Mm -hmm. That murkiness isn't in there. Whereas with the French press, you just separate the beans and so um, from the, from the coffee, so it leaves some of that in there. Yeah, and I bet if we like kept this around, so we did. One of the things we didn't talk about was temperature, right? So this one, it's metal and it's um, insulated. So this one's going to be hotter for longer. Whereas mm -hmm. that one, you'd probably need to put it on a heating element, right? If right, you're going to keep it. To. Yeah, and then that's another thing is that the temperature. As it cools down, uh, the flavors change too. Mm -hmm. So, like um, in really fruity coffees, you'll notice as it cools down that you can taste the fruitiness of the coffee a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And and so that's kind of one of the interesting things about pour over too is that you're gonna have different flavors the longer you drink it. Mm -hmm. If you have a, if you don't use a heating element. Awesome. Well, it was. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. And doing this, this it was a lot awesome. of fun. Um, so this has been a brew comparison between a pour over and a French press. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, and we will see you next time.